Hey, what's up, my Uplifting Life Partners? This is Ron Simplified Myers, your Uplifting Life Partner. For those of you, this is the first time hearing me speak. First, let me say welcome. Thank you for the support. I am the author of the book, The Relationship Success Handbook, Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. Now, today's topic deals around online dating, why it's become so popular. Um, one of the reasons, of course, is because um, the negative stigma that was t attached to it it's starting to disappear. Most people looked at it as it was people that were desperate, people that uh, looking for a one night stand, and in some cases that is still true. But that was kind of the, the, the attitude towards online dating, but it started to change. I've heard, uh, you see here different numbers, see different numbers. The most recent one I've kind of heard is like 65% of marriages today are coming from online dating. And the question is, why is it happening and why is that become kind of the source? The main reason is one of the things that I share a lot, especially with ladies, is you need to date more often. See, there's a thing that I share. There's a difference between date, dating, and intimacy. Date is anytime you set a place and a time to meet someone and you both show up, that is a date. No intimacy, nothing else. We set a time where I don't care if it's something as simple as the family says we're getting together to get at, together at five o'clock for such and such birthday party. That is a date. Dating is if we continue to set a time and meet at spots and we do it continuously. That's dating. Intimacy is when we cross the line because we're becoming closer. Um, I've used the analogy of an iceberg. An iceberg shows about 20 percent of it is above uh, water. The other 80% of the iceberg is under the water. People are the same way. They're only going to show you 20% the surface level. That's all you'll ever see from most people. So the other 80%, when people start giving you the information that's under the water, in other words, the information that they don't share with the rest of the world, that creates more intimacy because you're getting more into them and learning more about them. Again, stuff that they're not sharing with the world. That creates more intimacy. The closeness is really the whole idea behind this. So intimacy means it could be friends and we're still intimate. It could be uh, uh, family members is still intimate or it could be an actual partner and it's intimacy. But for some reason, we have this thing of linking dating with intimacy. Like everyone that we go on a date with, we're looking to see if we can get intimate with, uh, if we can go to bed with, if they're going to be our uh, husband or wife. And I'm like, man, when did it lose its, its value for what dating actually is? Dating allows you the opportunity to get out and meet people. And then we decide where it goes from here. We may decide just to be friends because, hey, we hit it off from a friend's perspective. But, you know, as far as, you know, uh, going the next level, uh, we're not equal for that. Now, some people can do that. Some people can't. You got to know yourself. Some people, they're only looking for people that they can be intimate with or just have sex with. Um, their attitude is, I don't need more friends. Hey, whatever turns you on, I can never have enough friends. It's, it's how hard is it to have people as friends? That's the way I see it now. Um, but unfortunately we're in a society that wants to immediately make people that you go out with an intimate partner and that's messing people up. So what happens is even in public and I see it all the time, you walk past a young lady, she don't even look up. She's turning. She look. Why? Because a lot of ladies have linked up it to be nice, to be friendly equals you're interested in a guy or at least that's the perception he's going to have. You don't want to send off that vibe. So because of that, you will ignore him. What does this do? This allows you not to actually meet people, not to step outside your normal way of living, which means your chances of finding the right partner kind of disappears. Uh, it makes it very, I shouldn't say disappear, but it makes it very hard to find a partner. Because think about it. How many people are you actually talking to and you're building a relationship with on a daily basis? For most people, you see the same people, talk to the same people every day. Those are even in the dating phase. Maybe you date one person every month or one person every other month, every other week, I should say. Or even if, you, if you're one of the people you on a tear, I date at least once a week. So that's four people in a month. At the end of the year, you've contacted 50 people that you've actually dated. 50. 
in a year. Folks, see the odds? I mean, look at that. What did they say? It's about seven, uh, uh, what is it, seven billion people? Seven, you know, something like that. But it's a lot of people, bottom line. You talk to 50 in a year and was hoping during that process in 50 people, you were going to find the one. <laughs> you guys see where I'm getting? The odds are so, think about the person doing it once a month. So you're going to end up dating 12 people in a year and you expected to find the one out of 12, 12 people. Wow. Folks, the, what, what online dating has done is it's allowing people to actually go on dates, meet different people. And more importantly, if people are being accurate on their profiles, you're actually, because one of the things we talk about is uh, creating a list which are the things that you're looking for, where, where you're headed. Because you guys know, I, that's why the book is called Get Rid of Your Problems, Not Your Partner. I say, you got to know where you're headed. You got to know what you're trying to do with your life, what you want out of your life. And then it makes it clear on who you're looking to attract. So what does the online dating stuff do? It allows you to figure out where you, where you are, where you're going, what you want, what you're looking for. Interesting. And it allows you to actually see more people that are in that same interest. Cause I always talk about if you, for example, if your person says, I'm into, I want a woman that's into her body, that's into eating healthy, but I eat at Taco Bell and I eat at McDonald's almost every day. You guys see, see, see the problem. Where should I be hanging out? If I want to meet a woman who's into her body, probably health food stores. Good tip. Guess who's hanging out at the health food stores? Ladies that are into their body. Um, guess I should stop going to McDonald's and, and Burger King and go to restaurants that are a little healthy menu. Guess who's hanging at those restaurants? You guys see this? The key is, but I have to first figure out where I'm headed. What the profiles are allowing you to do is to get more focused. And then it's bringing it where you have more people that are headed in your direction. And it's, it's cutting down the time period of being able to attract those people. That's why it's becoming so popular. But it's stuff that I've said you needed to do all along, which is know where you're headed. Hang out in the spots of the things that you like. If you want somebody to send to bike riding, when was the last time you rode your bike? And do you keep riding your bike when you're the only person on, on the trail? Or do you go ride when there's a ton of folks on the trail? Again, not to catch. You guys know I say it all the time. It's not about going there to catch because as human beings, we pick up on each other's vibes. If I know you're just there to pick up, then I'm, I don't want to deal with you because I figure that's all you're doing is you're looking for a quick hit. You're not looking for a relationship. But if you go through the natural way of being, which is you ride your bike because you ride your bike because you enjoy riding your bike, but you're in the arena, the chances of you attracting the people are very good because you're in the arena. You guys get me? So the online dating has just basically condensed and, and it's making you do the things that I've said you needed to do all along. Know where you're headed. Get clear on what you want. Date more. And voila, you'll find the person. See, the dating more for a lot of people is the issue. Quit looking at everyone as my husband, my wife, because we went out. And learn how to go out as a human being and actually experience the world. Speak to people. There's gonna be knuckleheads. There's gonna be guys, ladies, that you say hi to that instantly gonna take it as you must be interested. All guys don't have that problem. There are some guys that do. Do you know how to say, no, I'm not interested, if he is one of those guys? Folks, this is not hard. Don't make this. But what happens is when you isolate yourself, you won't even look at, you know, you go in the grocery store, you're looking the other way, everything you can to make sure you don't see the, the guys that are coming by you and stuff. You're limiting your contacts. You're, eliminate, you're, lim, you're limiting your opportunities. That's why people are having a hard time finding dates or finding what they call Mr. Right because you're not giving yourself an opportunity the odds are against you. Um, the same thing I heard someone say, uh, um, they were talking about the church analogy. They were saying, uh, you see the same guys at church every single week at that particular church, every week, same guys, but you're still waiting on Mr. Right in that church. And again, this is not saying you need to go to all the different churches. That's not what I'm saying. 
But if you're only going to the church trying to find that guy and going to the same church every week, and those are the only guys that you even speak to are the ones that attend your church, and every other guy you run across through in the world, you just kind of ignore. You wonder why you're having a hard time finding what you call Mr. Right? You got to be willing to, to, to act like a human being. Speak. Put yourself in positions where people are. Enjoy this journey we call life. That's why we came here to enjoy the process. The more contacts you come into, the better you chance you have of attracting the right person, especially if you put yourself in the environment of what it is that you're looking for. Online dating, that's what it does. Again, this is not an online dating promotion and I'm like, yeah, go on online dating and find your partner. No, you can still do it the old fashioned way because I know some people don't want to do online. Like, those people I'm saying you need to do what it is that you get clear and understand why the people on online, and that's really the purpose of this video, understand why the people online are getting better results is because they're doing what I'm saying, which is they're knowing where they want to go. They know what they're looking for. Position yourself in those arenas. Speak to people. Um, if there's a guy that you're, that you're attracted to, for example, and uh, ladies understand, and I know some ladies have this challenge, it's like, well, if he ain't brave enough to come over here and talk to me, I'm not interested. Well, do you want to be rejected? And the answer I know is no. As human beings, most of us don't want to be rejected. Very few people that get a kick out of getting rejected, As a matter of fact, I don't know any, but get a kick out of getting rejected. So you have to put yourself in an environment where the guy is at least close enough. Like if you're on one side of the room, he's on another side and you're interested in him, at least position yourself close enough where he can turn or, you know, whatever, where he's close enough where he can, one, identify, but more importantly, he could actually speak to you and not feel like he has to walk all the way across the room to speak to you. And you say, no, and he got to walk all the way across the back across the room. And we got this mental thing, like the whole room is watching you move from there over to there to ask her and watching you walk all the way back. But because we have that block, because we know we can get rejected, most of us are not going to take that chance. But if you position me where I can do it and keep my little ego intact in the process, even if you say, no, you're not interested, nobody really saw it except for you and maybe one or two people that are sitting right there, then my ego still intact. I can move forward. But as human beings, we, we, we don't want that. We don't want that embarrassment. That's why for a lot of people, why they don't want to speak in, in public. As we know, they'll tell you talking in front of people is like at the top of the list of people's fears. They'd rather die, at least according to the list. Now, I don't know if they, if they had a choice in real life. If you say, would you rather die or speak in public, they're going to pick death. But when you talk about people's fears, speaking in front of public is actually higher than death. Um, so... But the bottom line is because people don't want to get rejected, they will try to keep themselves out of those positions. If you're trying to get closer to a guy, position it where he can do this and keep his ego intact. Because if you had to go approach him and took the possibility of getting rejected, you would understand. That's why, again, we get to that old concept of put yourself in other people's shoes. Same thing. If you had to walk across the room and took the chance on him saying no to you and you had to walk all the way across the room, you wouldn't do it either. So... Put yourself in other people's position. It doesn't make them weak. Doesn't mean he's not confident in himself. Doesn't mean any of that. The guys that usually don't have a problem walking across the room and speaking to you and don't care what you what you say and all that is the guy that's usually flirting with everybody that's in the place. I know that's bad and that's a stereotype, but in most cases, that is the truth. I'm not saying all, because there's all is a bad word. But usually the guy that is not that's not worried about any of that is the guy that's pretty much probably talked to the majority of the ladies in, in, the, in the club or wherever you're at already because he really don't care what you say. And that's just kind of his perspective. He's trying to get someone to go home with him. But anyway, that's a stereotype. Again, I'm not... <laughs> I'm just saying, but in most cases, it's accurate. Position yourself and then understand, again, that's why online dating is popular. And if you don't want online dating, you don't have to do online dating. You just have to position yourself uh, in the right places to attract the person that you're looking for. So anyway, as you guys know, it ain't right, it ain't wrong. It is my opinion. Uh, if you haven't had the opportunity to watch my videos, run over to ronsuchannel.com. Again, that's Ron's U, the letter U, channel.com. Subscribe to the site, like the videos, share the videos. If there's certain topics you'd like for me to talk about, please 
uh, share those also in the comments. I enjoy reading the comments. I enjoy uh, doing videos. Um, my objective is to simplify life and relationships. So anything I can do, I'm, I'm excited about doing that. And as you guys know, if you're not having fun, you should be doing something else. You can do the same practices as online dating without doing online dating. So don't feel you're trapped into that. But this video was to share with you why online dating is popular because it's doing the things you need to do. It's just in an easier group to locate. I'll talk to you guys later. Take care. Bye-bye.